Hello everyone, Patrick here and today I am bringing you that video I was talking about in my previous video, but if you haven't watched the previous video, this is going to be really cool and if you have watched it, it's going to be even better guys. Today I am talking about the replacement for the Nintendo Mini NES because unfortunately Australia did not get enough of these units to satisfy the cravings of retro gaming and today I'm going to show you what I came up with um, to replace this item but not so much I invented it or made it but what I compiled from the internet to get pretty much the same experience. Now I'm going to show you how it works and what it does and in the upcoming video I will tell you how to actually make it for yourself step by step. Now I've never really done any step by step videos so I'm going to go with this first and then you know go on if uh, enough people give me a thumbs up I'll do a step by step but it's not too hard it's all over the internet but you first have to start off with this my friends the Raspberry Pi 3 um, you can get any Raspberry Pi but the Pi 3 is obviously the newest it's got one gig of RAM uh, Bluetooth 4.1 and a wireless LAN connection and also normal LAN connection anyway so the good thing about this is that it's only $60 delivered to your door pretty much overnight, one or two days. It is um, the Australian stock, which is awesome. And uh, $60 is basically what you need to get started. The next thing you're going to need is actually a micro SD card. Now I'm gonna show you the Raspberry Pi of what it actually looks like. And it's just a logic board like this. If you have not seen it before, bring it up to the camera a bit closer, but uh, that's all it is. You've got four USB connections. You've got a LAN connection, you've got Ethernet, HDMI, the more most important one, and you've got a micro USB connection for power, and you've got a few bits and pieces more. Now, my friends, I am no expert in coding, programming, or any sort of DIY things in the digital era, but I was able to set this up to play retro games like the Nintendo Mini NES. And to be honest, I would say even better, and I'll get to the reasons why in a minute. Um, but it doesn't come with a shroud, there's no covering, the CPU is right here, it's a quad-core um, APU of some sorts, I'm not really sure, but it works. Uh, you can't load Windows on it, that's, that's all I know. Uh, there is a version of Windows that can be loaded on, but it is very, very limited. What you can do on this is load any sort of Linux distro that's built for this. Now, there has been a lot of development for this little piece of tech in uh, in the world and uh, you can download pretty much anything for it. The latest model is a lot more powerful than last and that is why I think it fits perfectly. So $60 we're starting off and then we got to get an SD card, a mini little one um, for about $12. Look, I would say 16 gigs for this project is going to get you sorted um, and it should should really do you know it's you're, you're not storing anything on it and if you are you could connect an external hard drive to it uh, but that's not what we're here for we're here for the competitor to the mini nintendo ness uh, so that's the other thing you will need the next thing you will need is a lot of people already have this uh, i'm not saying you have to have it but some sort of controller now the coolest thing about this is it has Bluetooth 4.0 and what it can do is it can actually connect to the PlayStation 3 Bluetooth controller. So that, my friends, is awesome. And if you've got one of these lying around, you can use it with this. Uh, so look, my cost is free. I bought this for the PlayStation 3 a long time ago. Um, but you can pick up some fake ones off uh, eBay for about $12. You can even pick up the original not the Raspberry Pi controllers, but the original Nintendo controllers, again, not really original, they're probably fake, uh, for about $10 too. I've ordered some, and uh, in my video about how to actually put this together, I'll show you guys, but they still haven't arrived. eBay, unfortunately, takes about 30 days if you want to get anything that's cheap from China, um, and not Australian stock. So that's what you're going to need. You're going to need a controller, obviously, to control this, and I'm not going to go through how to pair it in this video because I think that will get over complicated but it's pretty simple you just need the cable for the controller to the USB little few bits and pieces in the actual settings of the Pi 
and you're good to go. Now the Pi runs on something called RetroPie and that's in the name Retro meaning that it's going to be doing something old school. Yes, we all love that old school world. And memory berries. Remember? You remember that? Yeah, if you've watched South Park, you will remember that. Awesome episode. God damn, that episode is good. The whole season's been fantastic so far. Check it out, guys, if you haven't already. But <laughs> back to it. What you're going to do is download RetroPie, install it on the mini micro SD, whatever it's called, on here, and just slot it in and boot it up, and you're good to go. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to Chuck the TV on, I'm gonna show you how I've plugged it in. Now, I've done it terribly, I've got no shroud, I've got nothing. But what you can do is get an old um, NES box maybe, if you've got one lying around that's broken, you should probably put it inside, put the USBs to the left side and you could probably run this through a real box and make it look cool and whatnot. Now, the beautiful thing about RetroPie, the OS that you're gonna load up on this, is that it's not only an emulator, for NES games, it's an emulator for every single retro gaming console you can think of. And how can that beats it automatically on the spot, beats the mini NES because those 30 games you have on it can be loaded up on this, plus a million more of other ones Genesis, the Sega, uh, the Nintendo 64, um, oh, PlayStation 1, the DS. Yes, the DS. But I'll tell you a little bit about why the PS1, the DS is a bit, uh, even the Nintendo 64. So there is a few drawbacks, but we'll talk about it all in this video. And um, last thing is, the cool thing about this is that you've got HDMI and it will output to 180, so 1080p at 60 frames. Beat that PlayStation. This guy can output 1080p gaming. Even if it's just Super Mario Bros. But guys, <laughs> I've had so much fun with this. It only took me about three or four hours to actually set up, um, and rest of the time I've just been messing around with it, trying to get around to uh, make this video. So guys, we'll get into it, let's plug it in and see how it goes. Alright my friends, let's see, this is the back of a TV, and most new TVs nowadays have a USB power point uh, that you can run 5 volts. This thing here only needs 5 volts my friends, only 5 volts which is awesome. You can actually use it as a mini uh, NAS if you want with some storage and it will use less power than the actual proper NAS which is bloody amazing. So what we've got here is those four USBs that I showed you before, the LAN connection, uh, the HDMI and the sound right here. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is grab my HDMI cable as you can see uh, if I plug it in like so the whole thing can be held by just the HDMI cable. I don't need to worry about it falling off. And that will also carry the sound, so I don't need to plug in the sound um, jack right here. This is probably mostly for uh, computers where the monitor doesn't have a sound, but no, it works here fine. The next thing I'm going to do is plug in the power. Now, as soon as I put in the power in, if it's just a normal power plug, it will actually turn on. There's no on switch. This is it, guys. You plug it in, it will go on. So I'm going to plug it in, but you might see that it doesn't go on because the only time this gets power is if the TV is on, which is actually really, really cool because that means this is off until I want to play some game. So what I'm going to do is all it's going to do is just going to hang there and not do anything at all. Alright guys, it's time to turn it on and the only thing that really annoys my wife is the fact that if you turn it on now, uh, turn the TV on, it'll actually go straight to um, that, uh, that application. So, there it is. As you can see on the screen, there is RetroPie. Um, that is basically what you're gonna see when you um, boot it up and um, looks kind of cool and It's gonna take a little bit of time to load uh, the emulation station is what it runs on and here We have it my friends as you can see up in the top left corner. We've got 60 frames Yay that only shows in the menu unfortunately uh, I've turned that on just to show you what it can and cannot do but let me just angle it a little bit better so um, with this controller I should be able to now turn it on and it will rumble to life there it is and now if I flick through I can control these things 
So, technically speaking, you can put any sort of ROM on here. Now, ROMs are technically a very gray area in legalities. You have to own the games and, of course, own all the games that are on here from the NES days. So, I can have a ROM of them. And if you cannot find ROMs, I'm sure they're, they're out there. Anywho, they're old games. Now that the Nintendo uh, Mini is out, you should just probably buy that. But then, what's the point of this video? Anywho... Um, here it is, Super Nintendo, we've got PSP, we've got Nintendo 64, we've got Super Nintendo. Yeah, look, I, there isn't much there, I don't really, you know, own much. But, for example, let me show you Nintendo 64. So, um, I believe X is to activate it. You've got all your list, and you've got Super Mario, and you can run it straight from the, 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 the well, you don't have to call it. Mario! The Raspberry Pi, my friends. This is running on the Raspberry Pi. Stool. Alright, well, let's see some gameplay. It's not gonna fill the whole screen. The game was in 4x3, so you're not gonna get anything better than what it is now. Or what it was. But, yeah, it runs it pretty darn perfectly. And with uh, PlayStation 3 controller, it actually plays really nicely. Um, obviously, you can't skip cutscenes these days. Um, these days you can, back in those days you couldn't. Well, here it is, Mario 64. Look at him, 3D graphics and all. Okay, D to attack, fantastic. Look at that, my friends. Absolutely awesome, awesome experience, fun to play, and it's all running on a $60 device, not a $99 device, which can't run this. Huh, tsk tsk, tsk tsk. All right, back to it, back to another something else. You press both select and start, and you can flick back to um, to the menu, and we can flick back to the classic SNES. SNES? Super Nintendo. Is this Super Nintendo? Oh, it is Super Nintendo. And we've got the Super Nintendo system here, and that can also run any ROM you put in there. But I'm gonna show you the limitation of this device, and that is, unfortunately, the, probably the PSP. I've got a Tekken disc back there. Um, so what it can do is it can load up into the game and the graphics are very, very bad. But, you know, as you can see, there are, well, you can deal with it. Um, a lot of jagged edges. No anti-aliasing at all. Um, but uh, what you'll notice is that uh, it's gonna lag like crazy. It's going to stutter and um, it's just not, it's just, it's gonna be slow. Um, so let's let's see if I can load up again. Now, if you notice right there in the background, there is a little bolt, a lightning bolt. That means it's not getting enough power to run this because as things ramp up, it's going to draw more power, and unfortunately, it draws more power. It's going to tell you, oh, there's not enough power, but usually there is. 1.5 amps at 5 volts will do this. Um, but let me load up into a game. Tekken 6 was a Pretty okay game. Graphics were pretty chunky, but remember this was on a screen the size of your phone right now. And if you also know a little bit about phones, you can probably run a lot of ROMs on your phones anyway. So it's a matter of thinking. That board is pretty much as thick as your phone and it can run all these games on your TV at 1080p, except PSP. Now, as you notice, it is lagging a little bit it's uh, uh, round one, it's not fast, it's not smooth, so you, this is a limitation. PSP is pretty much it. It's pretty much unplayable. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, it's taking ages. Yeah, unplayable. But, 
anything that the Ness can do, this can do for the price of $60. Now, my friends, you can use a wireless keyboard with this. It's got USB jacks, put it USB, that's probably $30 for a wireless keyboard and mouse combo. You can use it with this, or you can buy a controller for $10 and you can use it with that. Wireless controllers would be the thing to use with this because my friends, I found out a really, really terrible fact about the NES. Maybe a reason to not buy it. That cable connecting it to the device, to your controller, is 75 centimeters. I am not kidding, it is 75 centimeters. So, you're either gonna do it old school style, sitting in front of the CRT TV, or you're gonna have the console out from your TV with a cable and a power cable going to it, then 75 centimeters away. This is 75 centimeters. 30, 60, 75, there you go. That is how far the box has to be from you for you to play this game. So it's gonna be jumping to the box, then to the TV with a HDMI cable, and a power cable. That is atrocious, Nintendo. How, why would you do that? 75 centimeters. Did you just have some cables running around in your back pocket or in the staff room and you're just like, hey, why don't we just use these cables? They're already cut to size. I don't get it, Nintendo. You've got a lot of money. You've got a shitload of money. Why didn't you make it wireless? How hard could it have been to make it Wireless with a little Bluetooth chip, maybe adding $10 to the cost. But here we are. We get a device that's uh, basically a shrunk down version of the NES, which is, I suppose, what it is it's supposed to be. But it also comes with all the limitations of what the NES had. So, my friends, in conclusion, is this a better substitute than the NES? The Mini NES? Is it something that's supposed to be substituted? Well, I think if you are only getting it for the games, then this is a much better option. And if you are getting the mini NES for the memory of having a device like this or a collector's item, then that NES device is something that can stand on your shelf and you can have it look pretty with its 75 centimeter cables. Otherwise, a hundred dollars, you know, you're spending money just for the name. Nintendo, that's all you're buying. Because the technology has existed for a long time. And thanks to the guys who have made RetroPie what it is today, because it is an amazing software that my little guide in the next video will cover on how to set it up. And it will be easy because of the way and how far it has come from the guys who are doing all this for free. Guys, this is the software is for free. It's built on Linux. And thank you to the developers who have spent their time on it because it has made an experience for a lot of people come back to life without having to purchase a hundred dollar device from Nintendo that came out 10 years too late. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll catch you in another video uh, coming up soon. There is a video I did about a scam against poor puppies. You can check that out. And uh, against puppies, against humans about puppies. It's just all over the internet. But if it is related to technology, it's on this channel. And if you like it, subscribe. If you want to see more, thumbs up. And I'll see you actually probably regarding this topic in the setup of the Raspberry Pi. Where is that lovely box? And it comes in a nice box, guys. $60. For a PC. It's a PC, for God's sakes. Catch you later.